Hi guys, it's Hope K and welcome back to my channel. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> Sorry. So today we're going to talk about family and especially some family tea. I actually googled what family means and Google really said it's a group of related things. I know. So anyway, but we'll go with that definition. There's other definitions, but I really like that one. It kind of just on the base level covers everything, right? Now, families have secrets and they have secrets for all types of reasons. Now we're gathered here because we want to sip on some family tea. But I wondered why people actually do have secrets in their families. And I found out it could be, you know, several, many, many, many things, but the top ones are fear of lack of understanding from other people, protection, shame and embarrassment, or privacy. The list goes on and on. And there are many reasons why someone might let the secret slip, and that's more interesting. Now, <laughs> it could be because it's too juicy and they just want to share, or it's too heavy for them and they want to share it with others to unbed in themselves. It could also be to help someone else in a similar predicament, or to use it as leverage against somebody else. Whatever reasons people have, they came to the internet and sang like canary birds. And let me tell you, sis, I am here for it. <laughs> so grab your snacks, because it's about to get interesting. What's the family tea you found out once you got older? When I was younger, me and my siblings used to always spend the summers out in the country at my grandpa's house. And so one day, me and my siblings are just sitting in the living room watching TV. My grandpa comes home from work. He walks through with the neighbor from across the street and her friend. And they go into the back room and close the door. We didn't think anything of it. Hours later, he comes out in nothing but a pink towel and he's yelling, where is it? Where is it? And we're like, where's what? What are you talking about? And he's like, you know what I'm talking about? Where is it? He's looking in couch cushions. He's looking in the fridge, in the freezer. And we're like, we don't know what you're talking about. What are you looking for? And he's like, you know what I'm talking about? And then eventually him and the two women, they just left and we're like, what the f just happened the next morning my grandpa comes back and he like apologizes to us and he's like i'm sorry y'all i think that they put something in my drink when i wasn't looking blah blah why did it take me being an adult to find out that my grandpa was on crack my mama was leaving us for the summer with a crack addict he cool now though He's good. I found out my biological grandmother is not the woman I was calling my grandmother on my mama's side this whole time. So picture it. Y'all going through obituaries and everything and looking at old family members and like, oh, elders of my family, right? Girl, tell me why. I found out that the woman that I have been calling grandmother is not my biological grandmother, but my biological grandmother's sister. So, coming from World War II, apparently, my grandfather was so shell-shocked that he accidentally murdered my biological grandmother. Because of it, the courts deemed him an unfit parent and sent my mama and her siblings, who my mama at the time was only a couple months old, sent them to live with my grandmother's sister, the woman that I had been calling grandmother. Girl, but it get deeper. So, I was talking to my mama about this whole shit show, and then my uncle calls. I had always called him my uncle because that's my grandma's son. But now knowing that she's not my biological grandmother, that would make him my great cousin. And my uncle, he gets on everybody's nerves because he's old and see now. He's like in his 70s and like, and I was just like, mama, sometimes you should just not answer the phone for him because he gets on everybody's nerves. My mama looked me dead square in the face and said, well, that is my biological brother. Hold on, because my mad ain't mad thing. Tell me why my mama let me in on the family secret. So it turns out the woman that I grew up knowing as my grandmother is my uncle's biological son. But my biological grandmother married my mama's daddy. All of her children have the same father. Got it? Got it. But my grandmother went behind her sister's back and slept with her sister's husband thus creating my uncle cousin 
Did I lose you? I hope I didn't. So let's review. Grandfather accidentally kills his wife, sends the children to live with his mistress, who is his wife's sister, who he already has a son with. Hmm. Mm. The shit you learn when you get older, boy. Back in the day, my grandfather was extremely well off. He owned a ton of land and had his wife living pretty much like a queen. She had her own seamstress. She had her own cook. She had anything you possibly think of, he did for her. My grandmother was actually hired as the maid. She saw this and wanted that same life. So she pretty much bamboozled him. Or I mean, it takes two to tango, but the one thing his wife could never give him was a child. My grandmother got pregnant. Soon after my grandmother got pregnant, he pretty much kicked his wife to the curb. And my grandmother pretty much took on the place of the wife. Eight kids later, my grandfather comes home early one day from work and finds my grandmother in bed with the milkman. When I was 19, I found out that I was the family tea. I learned that my mother was not my birth mother, but my stepmother. I had always heard family whisperings that she hated me because I was not hers. And I had asked my dad multiple times, is there anything you want to tell me? Cause I'm hearing things. And he would say, how dare you ask such a question? And things got to a boiling point one day with my mother when I was 19. And she shrieked at me that maybe all of this was the way it was because I wasn't hers. And I still couldn't believe it. I thought she was saying that to hurt me. So I went to my dad and said, dad, mom is telling me I'm not hers. And he said, I'm sorry. I thought it'd be better if you thought she was your mother. And I remember saying to him, I asked you so many times and you made me feel so bad. I had said to him, mom beats me with the vengeance. Like she really hates me. And he would say, how dare you say that about your mother? For years, I felt so guilty, like I was such a terrible daughter for letting rumors get into my head. I felt crazy. And everybody knew, all the extended family knew, it was something they talked about all the time. All the cousins, the kids, they all knew. My brother, seven years younger than me, he knew. And deep down, I think I knew, but I didn't want to believe that my mom could be like that to me or that my dad could lie to me like that and just ignore all the abuse and let me hate myself all these years where i was constantly thinking about unaliving myself an uncle that i thought was dead like doornail like casket like unalive Right? And alive. And well. Um, but the person who told me he was dead is now dead. And I found out that she told me he was dead because she hated his black ass. Wow. Death. Just death. My family. I need to write a book. So, early 1900s, my great granddaddy, my great grandma, and my great uncle decided to come to Arkansas because my great granddaddy killed a white man early 1900s, mid 1900s, back in Mississippi, back in that time, you know, slavery time. Well, they came to Arkansas. Well, my great granddaddy changed his last name to O'Neill, O N E A L. His brother changed his name to O'Neill also, but it's O N E I L. Then I found out that my grandma has 13 kids. First six have different daddies. The seven, the last had the same baby daddy. So my grandma has 13 kids with seven baby daddies. 
then I found out that the person I always thought was my cousin is really my uncle because my grandma and my granddaddy adopted him. We consider him a cousin because my uncle was dating his mom, which they have a daughter that is my biological cousin, but he's my uncle. So when I was a kid, my dad got, my dad won primary custody of me and my sister and my mom had visitation rights. In the beginning, my mom visited pretty regularly. Um, my dad would fight with her sometimes, but she would literally try to visit whenever she could. I was aware of her trying to make the effort to see us. I would hear my father arguing with her. I would hear them fighting when it was time to bring back. And then like out of nowhere, she just stopped coming to see us. She packed up her things, she moved out of the state, she changed her number, and my mom ghosted us, and we were so confused. She even came back a few years later, she was visiting one of our aunts, and we got the chance to see her, and my sister asked her, and my mom gave this weird-ass answer and was like, oh, everything's not about you. And as a child, that shit pissed me off, because it was like, what do you mean everything's not about us? Like, which were your kids? What else is it about? And then a few years ago as an adult, I found out that the reason my mom stopped coming around is because my father was making her exchange sexual favors for seeing her children, and she didn't want to do it anymore. I do think so, um, and I'm just going to give you a quick backstory. So when my mom left my dad, she basically packed up her kids and she left, and there were three of us. Two of us were my dad's, and the last one, I mean the oldest one, was another man's. My dad and my sister's father became friends, and they both were reaching out to my mother, telling her that they missed their kids and they wanted to see them. They said they didn't, they didn't need to see her, but they wanted to see their kids. My mom conceded and sent us to New York so that we could see our fathers because they were swearing up and down that they missed us, but they were actually working together. They lied. As soon as we touched down in the state, they basically filed for custody, both of them at the same time, filed for custody, said that my mom had ran off and basically kidnapped us. And they talked about how we were neglected and we were this, this, that, and a third. Um, they went to court, they shared information between the two of them. My mom lost custody of us because she was suicidal and she was mentally, and, um, mentally unstable based off of information that she had shared with her partners, like pillow talk type energy. Um, so she lost all three of her kids in one clean sweep and to some very awful men. My father is a monster and my sister's father is a character boy. And I don't think she ever actually recovered after that. I genuinely don't think she ever recovered from that. She ran off, she joined the army, like we didn't hear from her. She was like really sporadic. Um, there's actually five years between my sister and then the next kid that she had. And then she started having kids back to back again. But I genuinely feel like she she never recovered from that. Like, how do you recover from having two men that you used to love snatch your kids out from under you and demonize you and use your secrets like that, then turn around and try to trade sexual favors for the kids that they took from you? On top of the fact that you're they're abusing these kids that they took from you and they're making sure to let you know that they're abusing the kids and you can't stop them. How do you recover from something like that? I found out my grandpa was an alcoholic by finding him asleep on the toilet. After my parents got a divorce, I found out my mom was a whore. Oh, wait, I already knew that. But just to add on one little fun fact about my life, my parents were married for nine days. My mother went missing. My dad was frantic. Oh, where is she? Uh, well, found her. She was at his cousin's house. Well, uh, after that cousin, they were married for about 10 years. She divorced him, married another one of my dad's cousins. Three men with the same grandma. Back when my mom was first married, her first husband to Brandon, she was washing clothes and she was going through stuff and she found some blonde hair. At the time, my mom didn't wear any weave or anything like that, so her natural hair is brown. And so she realized that he was cheating and then she cheated back. <laughs> but when she cheated back, she got pregnant. And here I am. They ended up staying together and he raised me as his own child, so yeah. That's still my dad, just not my biological father. This is for spiritual talk and for my African people, let's go. So as a kid, I always thought my father was the oldest of his family, but that came to be a lie because recently he just introduced me to his big brother. And when I tell you I saw this man's face and when he spoke, something activated in me, eh? I would not lie to you. So after speaking to this man, my mama pulled me to the side and said, do not engage that man again. I said, why, ma? What, what, what's wrong? You know why he was kicked out your family? Nah, I don't know nothing about this man, ma. Hey, ever since you were a child, me and this man have been engaging in spiritual warfare and I have been kicking his ass. 
My uncle been trying to hex my mama for years. And she's been whooping his ass. <laughs> my uncle is one of the biggest voodoo priests in Ghana. Okay, so y'all gotta understand that this whole feud was between my dad and my uncle. My mom had nothing to do with it. It's, it's their past that just came in and carried over to my mom since they got together. My mom just decided to end that. So uh, she takes me back to the beginning when this guy appeared to her. You see, I had a dream that something was happening to us while we were sleeping in the house back in Ghana. Eh? And something was not right. Eh? I was shivering cold in the dream. I was very cold. And, and I felt like I was dying. Something was attacking me and freezing me. As soon as I felt I was going to sleep away, eh? I heard your grandmother scream my name. She said, hey! And when she screamed, I snapped out and I saw this shadow figure. And I tried to defend myself and I pulled the face down. And when I put the face, I saw this man's face. I pulled his face down, eh? He disappeared. He started to run. He tried to disappear away. But I remember this face. If you remember, you were about seven or eight. I woke you up out of your sleep. Eh? It was a hot night. But you remember the bed seats were frozen hard. Full contest, y'all gotta understand that uh where we used to live in Ghana when I was growing up. Uh, we had no central air, no AC or nothing. So it was impossible to have frozen bed sheets. So my mom woke me up when I was about eight years old. And lo and behold, the bed sheets were frozen cold. And my brother was shivering. So, so what did my mom do, you might ask? So there was a day that your uncle was supposed to come visit your father to talk about whatever they talk about. Because he always regularly comes to visit your father. And when he comes, he comes upstairs. He never stays downstairs to call him. He comes up the stairs and he calls him upstairs. Eh? Remember that. To show him that he is messing with the wrong woman. Eh? Before he came, I put a barrier from the steps, from downstairs to upstairs, that if he meant harm to my family, he will not be able to climb those stairs. Eh? So listen, oh. Every time he takes a step on these stairs, his legs will be on fire and he wouldn't be able to move. And if he resisted, he will end up in the hospital. <laughs> okay, so I asked him what happened that day. I asked my dad what happened that day, right? So uh, my uncle comes to see my father regularly all the time. But today he came to come see my father and he didn't climb up the stairs. He kept calling my father to come downstairs. Why? <laughs> my father said that every time this man took a step to come upstairs, he yelled out in pain because he felt like his, his legs were on fire, like something was going on. To the point where he said he couldn't move, man. He was about to faint. And then <laughs> he fainted. <laughs> my mama sent my uncle to the hospital for about two weeks. <laughs> he never came back to the house <laughs> on the first encounter. <laughs> you know, I don't think I've ever said this story to anybody out loud. But I guess now that I'm an adult orphan, my mom's not here, my dad's not here. I can tell they business, right? It's only right. And if you're a part of my family and you see this and you get offended, I'm sorry, but it's my truth. All right, bet. So it's 2015. I'm 27 years old. I get invited to my cousin on my father's side barbecue. So I grab my son. We go out there. We're having a good time. He's seven at the time. We're having a great time. My father's there. Whole bunch of my family is there on my father's side. My oldest sister is there. There are four of us, okay? I have an older sister, a brother, a sister right above me, and then me. I mean, my oldest sister were 17 years apart. Me and my brother were 14 years apart. And me and my sister right above me were eight years apart, okay? That is pertinent to the story. So we're having a good time. Black people barbecue, hot weather. We're having a good time. People dancing, eating, drinking. My father drinking my father drinking so i'm outside with my father and my favorite uncle and we just chilling we just whatever we talking my father he a little lit i'm a little lit but not like lit lit my father was lit i'm just nice my uncle he was sober he a cop we love him i love him to death he he basically raised me too so my father in his drunkenness decides to tell my 27 year old self Oh, did you know that you're the baby of the side chick? The baby of the side chick? What the hell are you talking about? Well, I was with your sister's mother when you were born. And I never really told anybody about your mother. So I just brought you around one day and they were like, whose baby is that? And yeah, that was basically. Now I'm sitting there with the screw face, okay? Because I'm 27 years old. Boo boo, no one's ever told me this. My uncle is looking at me because he can see that I'm about to like, cry. And my uncle is like, 
oh, you know, I remember when you were a baby and you were so beautiful and you were this and you were that. Child, I, I was, I was, I was gone. I was like, what? So I had to go inside and find my older sister because I knew that if my sister told me this, then it was going to be true if she validated it for me because she's 17 years older than me. She keeps it straight with me, whatever. And when I found my sister, she going to tell me, she goes, okay, um, well, did anybody ever treat you any different? Me? I was like, uh, no. She's like, all right then. So yeah, that's the day that I found out that the family tea was me. People seem to think that my father had some woman, like my sister's mother, he was still with my sister's mother, and then she took me in and never told me that she wasn't my real mother. No. My father had three baby mamas, okay? My oldest sister, who's 17 years apart with me, with me and my brother, who's 14 years apart with me, that's one mother. He was married to her. Then they got a divorce, and... He ended up with my sister that's right above me, the one that's eight years older than, than me. That's the mother we're talking about here. He was with her, okay? My mother told me, and my mother raised me, okay? My mother told me in 1980, that she met my dad in 1980, and she met him. My father was a motorman for MTA. He drove a train. He drove the three train, the two train, whatever train. And she met him that way. My mother was a station agent. And that's how she said she met him. So they had a relationship off and on. They never got married. I was born in 1988, okay? My sister right above me was born in 1980 when she met him. So my mother knew about my sister, knew about my other siblings, but she didn't know that she was being hidden. That's, that's the vibe that I'm getting. Now, my father's side of family is huge. My father is the oldest of, I think, 13 or 14 or was the oldest. My father passed away in 2018. My mother passed away this year in June. So I don't have parents. I'm an orphan. But when I was a kid, I had the best childhood. My father may have hidden me in the beginning, like under the age of one, but my father never, 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 never was a deadbeat. He always took care of me. My mother took care of me. My father took care of me. I knew who my father was. I knew who my mother was. I just didn't know the circumstance between them. I just thought it was just a normal thing of, well, these two people just broke up. And I think one of the best things to me about this story is that my family is amazing and full of love and no one, no one ever opened their mouth to me. I knew of summers in Georgia, spending time with my grandmother and just being around my other side of the family. No one, they might have known, but no one ever said to me, hey girl, you illegitimate. Ooh, that was a lot. Some of it was funny and some of it was very sad. Like it's just surreal what we do to each other. I am not a um, certified psychologist or a doctor of any sort. I basically come to you guys with life experience. So please take everything I'm saying with a pinch of salt. Do not come here seeking real life answers because I don't have that for you. You need to see a, a therapist or a professional of some kind. But from my research and reading around around this topic, I did come up with a few things that I think are worth trying to remember if you guys are going through family drama. Like jokes aside, because I know all, this was supposed to be a really light-hearted video. A little bit of a kiki, you know, getting nosy, snooping in other people's business, honey. But at the same time, I feel like I'll do a huge disservice if I don't say the other stuff that I learned. So here it goes. Don't pressure people into knowing information that might be harmful to them. For instance, if you've recently found out that somebody is a out of wedlock child or belongs to a random uncle in the family be sensitive be reasonable just because you know the information it doesn't mean they need to know it or that they're ready to even process that maybe talk to somebody else somebody older in the family and seek advice or something encourage people to share certain secrets but don't be pushy the nature of secrets is that they are a huge burden so the person probably already does want to tell but they are fearful so don't rush it because you're going to scare them back into not telling it. But I do realize that some situations you might have to push people. 
I'm just saying practice discretion. After you learn the secret, do not take on the information and let it become your burden. For instance, if you are a product of sexual abuse or you're a milkman baby, that is not on you. There are grown adults who did this. It's unfortunate that you came into the world like that, but you're here now and you can make a valid contribution. So do not take that burden to be yours. Honesty is key, but time is king. Nothing will be mended in a month. So be patient with people. Whether you're the one who has revealed a secret and it was your secret to reveal, or if you're somebody who's heard a secret and it affects you somehow, take time. Like I said, I am not certified by any means. I just did a little bit of research and this is one of the things that psychologists and peer-reviewed art articles did say. Do not push people. Be patient with it. Do not rush things. Obviously, it's a very sensitive matter. So please be kind to one another. But anyway... All seriousness aside again, that was a lit video, I'm not gonna lie, like I was getting into it like no man's business. Do you guys have some family tea? Are you the family tea? What did you find out? I am nosy as hell and I wanna know, so please share in the comments down below. Remember to like, comment and subscribe. Turn on your notification bell so that you know every time I upload. Until next time, stay safe out there. Cheerio. Ajika, 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 ajika